Welcome to my channel. What I do is I show you how to value a company using prior financial information. And also I look at their financial ratios, compare them with its competitors, and I look at the capital structure of the companies to see how much debt and equity they have. I do this with you using my Excel discounted cash flow model that I built. And I show you step by step along the way. The company I'm gonna look at today is Vonage. You can use Vonage to make phone calls from your computer, video conferencing calls, and it also offers a lot of other services as well as business services. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $2.9 billion. So that's a value of the company according to the stock market. Let's see what they're trading at, $11.95. So that's one share of stock. Now we're gonna pull the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount those dollar amounts back to today's value. And that's what I'm doing in this video. Now I'm pulling their actual free cash flows. And then I'm gonna pull the net income, which is the profit and loss. And that's on the income statement. And that's accounting profit and loss. So there's a lot of non-cash items that are in the income statement. Now I'm gonna pull the revenue, which are the sales for each year, and put that into the model. And we also wanna look at the numbers to make sure they look okay. They had two years of negative net income, yet positive free cash flow. So that's what you want to see. You want to see positive free cash flow. So that means the company's adding value to its investors. The revenue also has been increasing steadily every year. So that's a good sign. Let's look at the capital structure so we know what discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $33 million of interest on their debt. And let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. Go to liability section. Long-term debt of $497 million. That's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. The income before tax is $30 million. And the income tax is $12 million. So the cost of debt is 3.83%. Now to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. The S&P index has a beta of 1. This has a beta of 0.55, so that means the stock moves about half what the market moves. So that's good. You want a stock with a low beta, that means it's not volatile. Let's go back to the balance sheet and get their current assets. We need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are mainly cash, accounts, receivables, and inventory. That's 173 million. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio. That's 251 million. And their equity, that's total assets minus total liabilities. And we need the equity to calculate the ROE and the price to book value ratio. Now we're gonna pull the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. And that's 6.8 million. And we need this number to calculate the interest coverage ratio later. Let's look at the capital structure of the company. The cost of debt is 3.8% they have 47% debt, cost of equity is 6.5%, and they have 53% equity, so the WAC is 5.3%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows, and then we also did a terminal value, that's an estimation of all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today's value using the weighted average cost of capital. That's in green here. And we get a value for the company of $3 billion. We divide it by 243 million shares. And we get an intrinsic stock price of $12.50. It's trading at $12, so it's trading at a 4% discount. So it is a buy according to the model, but it's really close. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They're at $14, so they're a little higher. So they're saying the stock is 16% undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it's been kind of up and down. It might have peaked around $13, $14, but it's come down a lot, then it's come up. So it looks like it's all over the place. So the stock price can always move higher or lower than intrinsic value. It's what the investors feel the future of the company is going to be worth, not so much what it was worth in the past. Let's look at their financial ratios to see if we get more information. 
They have a negative PE because they have negative net income, so we can't look at that. They have a good price to sales and a weak price to book. So price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. And I like to see below 2.5, they're at 2.4. So that's good, they're providing a good value for this ratio. The price to book is a bit high, that's stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 5.1. A weak price to book ratio may indicate that the stock price is too high, they don't have enough equity on their balance sheet, which means they have too much liabilities. Let's look at their current ratio, that's not good, and negative ROE, that's also not good. So current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover the current liabilities, so they may need to take on more debt. ROE is negative because they have negative net income. Let's look at the interest coverage ratio. That's not good, 0.2. So they only have $7 million of earnings before interest and taxes and $33 million of interest expense, so they can't cover their interest expense. That's a really bad sign. They could go into default. Fortunately, they don't have too much debt, only 47%, so they could borrow more. It's important that they improve the interest coverage ratio because that's how companies go into default when they can't pay the interest on their debt. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done a video on Bell Canada, Rogers, AT&T, TELUS, Vonage, Verizon, and Zoom. So Vonage, if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average in the industry. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So PE, we can't look at because it's negative. They do have a better price to sales and price to book ratio than the industry. So even though I said their price to book isn't so good, you want to compare it against similar companies. Their current ratio and their ROE is worse than the average. They do have less debt than the average. Average in the industry is 49%. They have 47%. Zoom is the only company with no debt. And their market cap is the smallest of all the companies. So let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching.